Right, well I've got that uh, little rubber buffer glued back into the top of the body here. The glue at the moment is still wet and sticky. I'll leave that to cure for a minute or so and then I'll get it back in place on the body. Alright, time to put the top on this camera I think. Blow out to get rid of any loose dust. Get this top cover in place. It's always difficult to seat them around the meter. I'm checking my frame counter. You might remember I said the frame counter was off the number. It appeared to me it went about, was pulling too far. I'm going to uh, wind the screw in slightly. Well, that's a lot better. That number's centered now. Could do with a little bit more, perhaps. I'll just back that screw out part of a turn. A quarter of a turn should be plenty. Let's have another look. Get the top cover seated again. Yes, that looks pretty good to me. Right, I'm just going to have a peer through the window. Make sure I'm not seeing any dust in the finder. A little bit showing on that mirror, off front surface mirror. Let me just blow that. Yes, so I think those marks are there to stay. That's all right. I'll just try my shutter release. Yes, I could hear that. Releasing the film advance lever just before the point in the stroke where the shutter itself fired. Well, that's probably the best point to go for. It's frustrating if the shutter fires first because if you're one of those people who has a very gentle touch on the shutter release button and do as they were told and squeeze it gently until the shutter releases. If you do that and then let the shutter release button return up again you may find that you're in a position where the shutter fires but the film advance is not freed up for the next stroke and that's of course you can overcome that by pressing the film release button but it's very frustrating it will annoy you no end so you don't want to be in that position if you can help it I'll just get this Rewind knob. I noticed that the screw in that is a bit loose, so I'm going to tighten that up. If I can find the tool, there it is. So I'll just tighten that up. That's better, just me, it needs to be nipped up. Right, I'll just tighten this screw up. That's good, so that's our rewind knob in place. I'll put the meter control uh, dial in place shortly. First I want to get my leatherette back on the base of the camera. Now the leatherette was a little bit distorted. It was uh, Certainly not lying as flat as I would have liked it to lie. You can see it here, it's a bit bowed up in the centre and so forth. I'm going to scrape that clean. Then I'm going to soak this in some warm soapy water. 
and press it flat with a warm iron and hopefully get that dead flat. So first of all I need to clean that. I want to get this surface clean so I'm going to use a scalpel to scrape that rubbish off there. Here we have one. Some of that stuff scrapes off very easily, some of it does not. There are probably multiple coats of different adhesives on this piece of leatherette. Right, well I think a little bit of uh, solvent might be in order. I just want to soften that adhesive to allow me to scrape it off. So I'll put a bit of naphtha on a cotton bud and I'll just treat this little bit over here to start off with and see what happens to that adhesive. That's certainly coming away quite well. I wouldn't say that the naphtha has melted that adhesive or liquefied it, but it certainly seems to have destroyed its bond to a large extent and allows me to scrape that off the surface. That's looking good. One of the reasons I want to get this adhesive off the leatherette is that the adhesive, having hardened up in that shape, will be holding the leatherettes in their distorted shape rather than letting it relax flat again. So by removing the adhesive, it makes it easier to flatten out the leatherette and the camera is now warning me that the battery's tired so if it's not one thing it's another around here oh well let's just keep going either the camera will stop or it won't might allow me to get this particular task done that looks better That's probably good enough for my purposes. That leatherette is already lying a lot flatter. So what I'm planning on doing is soaking this in some warm water with a little bit of dishwashing detergent in there. Pressing it between two pieces of paper with a warm iron. And what I expect to happen is that this will flatten out. And then I'll be able to apply it to the bottom of the camera and it should stay nice and flat. That's the intention and we'll see, well you'll see very shortly because I won't bother filming all of that, what the result is when I'm done. Right, there is my leatherette. It's lying much flatter now, hopefully that'll do the job for me. So what I need to do is to apply the adhesive and then stick it in place over here. So, be on to it.
making sure I get plenty of cover right to the edges of the leatherette since the edges were tending to curl up a bit. That looks pretty good. Let's remove that excess. White brown there. It's got threads of adhesive across it. Put this in place. And I can see that the reason the leatherette was a problem is that the leatherette has shrunk, which of course is not uncommon. So I'm getting it fitted around this uh, rewind button hole here, making sure it's pressed around there. Of course it doesn't really want to fit down neatly. And the same around this boss in the centre, making sure that leatherette is firmly pressed in down around that boss. At the other end of the camera that looks fine. You can see we have a, a, a gap around the edge of the leatherette. That's okay, we'll just leave that there, that's just going to remain because we can't stretch the leather it out, out to cover that and as long as it's even it won't look out of place. That looks good. So the advanced lever can go on. I'm reminded that I would really like to uh, find another leatherette patch for the middle of this Film advanced lever. So we we'll, might do a hunt for one of those. Can't get this screw hole to pick up, that's better. Three screws hold this on. Snug those up. That's good. Check my film advance. That's all good. That's working smoothly. So no problem there. Check that my leatherette has remained seated firmly down around that boss. It has. And the next things I want to do is put back the back catch release cover. The back catch release um, component, but cover components. There should be a small spring with that, and that has gone where? That appears to have gone a wall. Let's uh, back when I find it. No, it was hiding in plain sight. That's all right. No cause for alarm. I want to clean these components. So a little bit of naphtha is called for. I can looking at these components. I can see that they're quite marked and stained. Um, almost certainly that means that there's been some corrosion going on there. Uh, that would certainly fit with the what I've found elsewhere in the camera. That's good. Just checking the state of the screws, they appear good. Getting this together. All right, zoom you in a bit. Put these two components together. 
feed in a screw from the bottom into the longer of the two slots. That's where the spring goes. Fit the spring into the slot so that it's between the screw and the little tab on that uh, component. Without disturbing anything, fit that to the base of the camera and put it in place. Get that screw run in. Check the action. That's good. Put the other screw in. Nip those two screws up. Again, check the action. That's good. So the leatherette patch for the base. I want to see if I can find one that's a better match than this um, one here that someone's cut out of something different. So I shall do that. And we'll get that done. Well, searching through my container of used retina leatherette. I've got a, a piece here. This didn't begin its life as a uh, patch for the advanced lever. It would have begun its life as some other panel. Perhaps for the base. Perhaps even from the back. But it would have been a damaged leatherette. Damaged beyond usefulness. And I've used that to cut a piece, a patch out that we're going to use today. So, a bit of adhesive on there would be a useful thing. Be even more useful if I could find the toothpick I was using a minute ago. I think that's gone somewhere else. So we'll start with a bit of adhesive on that paper. When you're dealing with small pieces of leatherette in particular, it's useful to transfer the adhesive to them from another spot like that piece of paper to give you more control. That leatherette uh, just sort of sucked up that adhesive like a sponge. It's okay, we don't need it to do anything special and get this piece in place. Now the leather it does have a bit of a grain to it, you can see a pattern in the background. I'll get that patch pushed down in place, that looks good. There's a couple of loose threads around the edge there and once that's dry I'll just whip those off with a scalpel and that should be nice and neat. But at least we've got leatherette that matches now which is what we should have had to start off with. The dial for our meter. I need to clean these components because they're um, very dirty. Dried grease, all the usual suspects. You might ask why the, there's so many dirty, greasy pieces on the camera that obviously haven't been touched since time began. And it's because traditionally when cameras are comparatively modern and they go in to get repaired for some problem or other, the repairer's task is to fix the problem they've been told to fix not to busy themselves stripping the camera down and rebuilding it. 
because when cameras are comparatively new, that sort of thing is not required. Generally speaking, a fairly comparatively new camera will have broken down for some specific reason. Perhaps some component is broken. Um, and it's quite natural for the repairer to go directly to that broken component and fix that particular problem. They may well check over the rest of the camera to make sure that it's functioning as it should, and it probably is at the time. But they wouldn't need to go to the extreme of dismantling the camera to this extent in order to uh, check and fix everything. So, dial on the top of the camera. There's two holes in this. And they match up with two posts on that uh, dial below it. The wavy washer. I'm applying a bit of synthetic grease to that. The film speed scale dial. I'm popping that on there. The settings pointer there that you select your film speed against the dial. There's a small wavy washer. It goes in here. And then we have our screw at the top. Find the right screwdriver. Just run that down. Do that at almost tight. Now I'm going to check this on my light source and check how it reacts. See if the meter reads correctly. I'll come back and let you know. Alright, that's reading correctly. Tighten that screw down a bit. So that meter is now working, re reading correctly. That was about, it was about a stop and a half out from where it originally been. I said it looked a little bit suspect when I got the camera. Well, that was certainly the case. So the camera at this stage, we're done. Everything's done and correct. The uh, rangefinder's been cleaned and adjusted. The viewfinder windows are now nice and clean. You can see out and have no fingerprint on them. Shutter's been serviced. Um, should give good results. That's an eighth of a second. And that's a much quicker eighth of a second than we had previously. Have we done anything else to the camera? Well, the leatherettes have been peeled, of course, and put back. I've replaced this leatherette disc on the advanced lever. And I'm just going to cut that little loose thread of uh, leatherette there away. That's it. So this camera can be given the once over, wipe over with a rag, um, check to make sure that everything is as it should be, and it can be invoiced and sent home. So that's a Retina 3C camera, one that functioned when it came here, uh, certainly needed servicing, it had problems in various areas. Um, most noticeably, the rangefinder and viewfinder system was very dirty and the shutter was running a little bit slow. Also, the meter was about a stop and a half out. That's all been taken care of. All looks good to me. Thanks for watching.